Hi, welcome to the 13th floor. I'm Marty Duda, and today with us, film director Florian Habish. Did I get it right? That's right. Which Excellent. Is in Maori, tekahu, and in English, hawk. Okay, I'll remember that. Um, so you've got a new film called James and Izzy. Yes. Which we've seen. We saw it at the big premiere at the, at the uh, Civic. But before we get talking about it, we'll show folks the trailer so they get an idea what it's all about. Nice. And then we'll come back and talk about it. They're better? No. They're better? That's better. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, sit back, James. It's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I came back to look after Dad, and then I stayed on to look after Mum. We're just living our lives together in harmony. It's a 50-50 relationship. That's a good way. And the other one. One more on this one. You created James, eh, Izzy? Pop your mouth and that's it. <laughs> Next minute. To have a balanced, healthy life, you've got to have a spiritual connection. Class of bourbon. A day? Oh, I've got a very sharp mind. Bert mention. They come from the most brave and strong fighting tribe I... in the whole area. Oh. <laughs> I'm my own boss. I have a Mac attack with the chips and Fanta for my mum because she's 100 years old. You don't need to tell um, my yeah, age. I'll just see about that. What's the budget for the party? If I win a million dollars tomorrow, I will spend it all. You're so beautiful, he can't stop filming you, mum. Someone said to me, oh, your mum's not going to get you a hundred. <laughs> I say, don't worry, be happy. Cheers. You're welcome as the sunshine. You'll be really blessed. As a king. James, if you could take one thing from this life to the next. It'll be my mum. This world, you don't catch me in a nutty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back here with Florian. We've just seen the trailer for James and Izzy, and so I think people can get an idea of what it's about. You basically uh, followed Izzy and her son James leading up to her 100th birthday, the five days leading up to it. So we'll talk about that in a minute, but what I want to start talking about is the thing at the Civic, because the film was shot two years ago and was supposed to be premiered like a year ago, but it, because of COVID or whatever. It, oh, it, no, no, it wasn't finished a year ago. It wasn't even finished, okay, no, no, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. So anyway, by the time um, the premiere of the Civic happened, it was her 102nd birthday. Yeah, James, her son, insisted that the film premieres at the Civic. Right. Because it's the oldest, you know, and the most glamorous theatre yep. in Aotearoa. And um, the last time Izzy had been to the movies, was during the Second World War with her brother Len at the Civic. Man, oh man. Yeah. Does she remember what she saw? No, <laughs> she doesn't. <laughs> and, and we, yeah, and we, um, we tried really hard getting the Civic, yep. um, but there were pretty much five pencil bookings for every date. Right. So I, I told James, I'm really, really sorry. I want to have the film at Civic too, but it's all booked up like would have to wait till winter you know yeah to do it and he yeah. said fine we'll wait till winter okay. my mum will wait it's got to be the civic yep and then um yeah i think a week later or something i got a call from luke madman yeah and he said um the civic had gotten back to him and all their booking pencil bookings had been cancelled right for this one date and it was april the 3rd 2021 yep which just so happens to be Izzy's 102nd birthday. Amazing. So, yeah. And we all most, got quite emotional hearing I'm that. I'm sure. And the most amazing thing is that she's there to, to watch it. I mean, that, that's pretty incredible. Because I think she was sitting, her and um, James were sitting like five seats in front of me. So I, I could like watch the film yeah. and kind of look down and watch them watching. It was an amazing night. So quite, tell, tell me what yeah. it was like for you. Well, just, I mean, I've, I've been thinking about this day, you know, for a year or so. But what I, what I heard from friends who, who came, they just said, 
knowing that they were there on Izzy's 100 second birthday, it was such a special experience for them. They, you know, like, yep. like you, you can't recreate something like that. No. It was, yeah, and the, and the feeling. Um, yep, yep. Yeah. And especially after the film, of course, James and Izzy got up on stage and yeah. everybody sang happy birthday to her. Yeah. She sang Que Sera Sera yeah. back to us. I mean, it was, you just can't beat that. Incredible, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, did, did you have any discussions with her afterwards? What, did, what was she feeling like after? She, she went, I was always a bit, oh, is it too much for Izzy? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Till, till I think 11.30 p.m., because she had her 102nd birthday in the Winter Garden afterwards. Right. She was happy in her element. She was even dancing. Like, she got up and did a few dances. Yep, yep, yep. Like, oh, That's all right. That's, yeah. She didn't have a, a, any whiskey, did she? Um, not, no, she had <laughs> Lothlorien Fijoa wine. <laughs> I see. Because that's one of her features in the that's film, right. isn't it? One she, of her secrets. Is, yeah. One of her secrets. So, how, for folks who are unfamiliar, how did you get tied into doing this film? How did you discover them? Well, actually, I didn't discover them. They discovered me. Okay. It was kind of like the other way around, which is often, you know, um, when you're lonely and single and you really, really want to find, you know, a girlfriend or boyfriend or soulmate. Right. And you try and try and you try so hard and you do everything and it just doesn't work out. And then the minute you give up, you stop trying. Yep. And then you meet someone. Boom. Boom. I mean, that's, that's, that's my experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but this film was like that too. Because, um, okay, so why had you kind of given up? Well. Because you've had some great films in, in, yeah. the, in the recent past, all the way up yeah. to the pulp thing. I mean, those are amazing. Um, so basically, I, after, um, after the pulp film, yep. which did amazingly well, and I was on a real high and... I got some offers from like other big bands if I want to make music films. With really? Them. Yeah. Like who? Come on. Uh, <laughs> like um, Beck, Def Leppard, <laughs> New Order. Fantastic. Yeah. That would have been um, wild. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. Crowded House or Neil Finn who lives just. Yeah, he's right over there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, I, I really, I was like, no, I want to go back home to New Zealand. Yeah. And. I want to make um, one of my dramas. Like I've been working on these scripts. I've got two scripts. Yeah. And my heart is in Aotearoa. I want to go back. So um, made that choice. My girlfriend, her heart was in Berlin, mm -hmm. but I talked her into moving back. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. And anyway, and then I got asked if I'd want to make a film about Spookers, the okay. scare park. Yep. Yep. I was so. It was, and this was the first time someone else had asked me to make a film. And, and I, I said yes. So I, I was commissioned to do this film about the scare park. Yep. And it was, the brief was to do like an entertaining doc on Spookers, which is this amazing place. Yep. And, um, and when I started making the film, I was really fascinated. I learned about King Seat Hospital, Psychiatric Hospital, the yeah, history yeah. of the place. Yep, yep. And that so many of the young people that work there scaring people are actually people that have got big challenges with mental health and right. things and and that they've found this amazing community amazing whanau there <laughs> and it's kind of almost like a form of therapy right and so i got really excited so there's a film there definitely yeah, definitely film made this film and um and it, it did well in festivals overseas but in here back home we had a cinema release and it was really hard because um people that usually like my films saw the horror stuff right. and they were like oh this is not you know this is too scary <laughs> and then horror people that people that want to see your horror were like oh this is a documentary about mental health yeah 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 so when it when it came out after the film festival it bombed right like no one went to see it it was a time where people weren't seeing many new zealand films mm. it was also during the elections yeah um <laughs> and anyway for me that was that was quite hard because i'd put two years of my life, my heart and soul into this. And it's a great film, yep. but and it was like, oh, no one wants to see it. And then I was trying to get funding for my scripts and had sort of a bad run, like getting funding. Uh. Uh, and then, yeah, so then at that point, I was just kind of thinking back, oh, have I met, I've probably made all the wrong choices with my career. And, oh no. You know, yeah. like. Now you're, now you're overthinking everything, yeah, yeah. right? But anyway, um, so a, a friend of mine, he, 
he has an ad company, Curious yep. Film. Okay. And because I, I pretty much, after Spookers, I'd worked two years on my scripts with no income, I pretty much was like, okay, I have to do something else. No more documentaries, like made a promise to myself. And um, I'm going to make some TV commercials. Right. I made some great NZTA car safety ads. Okay. The ones with the car yard where people are unselling cars. Right, no, right, right. No more chatterbox. Yeah. And, and that was cool because <laughs> I was actually like, oh, might be saving some lives, you know. And then I got asked to do an Instant Kiwi campaign for Instant Kiwis. Yep. And they asked me because they wanted something with real people. Yeah. And we, um, we looked over the whole country and... And this is where, so this is happening in my life. I'm like commercials director. Yep. <laughs> and <laughs> back in Kawakawa, in another reality, is James, whose mother, Izzy, is turning 100 in a couple of months' time. Yep. And James has organized this incredible party, an event, as yep. Izzy calls it. Yep. And he's a little bit short of cash. It's so epic. Um, he's a little bit of short of cash to pay to get the last things over the line. Right. So he sends a le he hears about this instant Kiwi ad campaign and he sends a, a, a letter and I, I think it was a postcard and it said, "Hi, I'm James from Kawakawa. My mum's turning a hundred in a few months. We would love to be in your instant scratch Kiwi ad." I can't believe that's how you yeah. connected. If you cast <laughs> if you cast us, my oh, mum man. promises to make one of her famous apple crumbles for you. <laughs> so I, I was like, oh, we don't have to audition these guys. You know, I was like, <laughs> they're cast. And everyone's to me, no, Florian, we have to audition. You know, this is the process we have to show the client. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, something about me, Marty, is I never audition. Okay. And most of the time it works. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not like 100%. But anyway, I had a strong feeling. And James had also, he's a very, very spiritual person. He's so committed to his spirituality. He does karakia every morning um, outside under the yep. power tree that you've seen in the film. Yep, yep. And he, he asked the spirit world for someone to film his mother's birthday. So he put that out there and, and I think he actually asked a, a couple of people and they, they were too expensive. And then, um, yeah, when I, when I met them for the instant Kiwi ad, when I step into their home, right, which is just yeah. incredible. It's like a museum of treasures, and um, yeah, I, I was just kind of overwhelmed. And they, they had this hidden agenda that they want me to film the birthday and, <laughs> and, and make a film about them. <laughs> so I got welcomed into their bar now straight away by Izzy, very cool, and James. Yeah, man. And I, I tried really hard. I said yes, I'll film the birthday. Yep but I really didn't want to make another doco after right. my previous experience. Right, right, right. Um, but uh, I So had, when, did they, when did you change your mind? So we shot the Instant Kiwi ad, and then we went, we traveled all around New Zealand shooting more stories with real people. Right. And I developed crazy insomnia because I told myself I'm not gonna make a whole film about these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'd wake up at two or three in the morning <laughs> and I just knew I have to make this yeah, film yeah. and it was like a real conflict like yeah. my mind saying no and my heart and soul saying this has to be done yep and then um yeah I, there you yeah. go <laughs> <laughs> I finally gave you had it. no choice yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing yeah that's very cool so you pretty much made the film all by yourself right with James with and Jay-Z the with three of the us the three of you we were so you had no team. crew no crew no sound recordist. Oh man! This, this, oh, so, was, yeah, this was the lens. Um, a, a friend of mine, a cinematographer, told me about these beautiful Russian lenses called Lomo lenses right. that were used in the seventies and eighties on Russian thirty-five mm feature films. Right. And I'm lucky. I, I have my own camera. I always have my own camera, which is my way to survive as a filmmaker. Yep. It means no one can stop me from making films. Right, right, right. I'll, I'll keep going, you know. You can <laughs> be rejected a million times from funding, but if I have my own camera, yeah. and that's how I've made half of my films, I think, just by getting out there. But anyway, so sure, I, got, this, I got a few of these lenses. Does Tarkovsky automatically by using the... the <laughs> they're, they're just beautiful, because um, my camera is very digital, right. but this gives it a really warm cinematic yeah, look. Yeah, yeah. And what I love about these lenses is when I got them, I just, I bought them from someone 
on the internet in Russia, yep. and it was a big gamble. I didn't really? know if they were going to work, you know. Well, like, you wouldn't even know if it was going to get gonna, here. Yeah, <laughs> and the guy was amazing. They, they work. But I was thinking, what have these lenses seen before? Right. What yep. have they yep. shot? You know, yep. they yep. shot, like, Russian propaganda films or blue movies or wildlife like it's i don't know where they may, maybe they haven't shot anything they look like they've had a lot of wear and tear right right, right. and now they're in kawa kawa yeah um Shooting. you know and 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 when i was filming Izzy and james seriously most of the time I, I was just thinking oh my god i've i've spent two no spent so long writing these scripts but no one could script this right like or their outfits, their fashion sense, their, yep. you know, like you, you can't, it's just like, so it, it's like a gift from God. For, <laughs> for, for me, they, yep. they just fell oh. down from the sky. And that is and, amazing, yeah. Yeah. So, so when you're shooting, what, what do you remember most about it? What, what affected you the most shooting the, uh, well, five there, days leading up to There it? were a few moments, like the scene, I don't want to give spoilers, but when they um, have the, the box. Yeah. They get the, Izzy gets the big present from yeah. America. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And she's allowed to open it on her uh, when she turns 100. Yeah. It's like the clock strikes midnight. They have a whiskey and then she opens this box. She's been, you know, waiting to open. Yeah. And seriously, I had to like try so hard not to, you know, laugh or <laughs> stop or wet my pants from laughter or what, what was going on. It was the most, I had to be so controlled. Yeah. Because I, I remember seeing it in the, in the theater, yeah. just going, "Oh my god!" Yeah. <laughs> and that scene just went on, and it was <laughs> so that was very difficult. That was probably the, one of the most challenging things yeah. for me. And did you have to make a, a choice whether we're going to hear you in the film? You know, I, at some point, did you just yeah. go, "Okay, I'm, yeah. I'm here. I'm, I'm part of it." I always have my voice in yeah. my films, yeah. and generally not me except in love story right. these are the same pants i wore in love story <laughs> beautiful <laughs> um but um yeah it, the, the whole film it's um i slowed down it's i it's shot and edited in izzy's pace right because everything izzy does is slow yeah and in the moment yep you know she doesn't talk or think about the past and i felt more like a david Attenborough light wildlife filmmaker <laughs> i was all i was doing was capturing Right. You know, everything was from them. It was all there. And I was just capturing it patiently. Fantastic. And and I loved it so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. It was opposite to a normal film shoot where right. there's a big crew. There's stress. Oh, the sun's going down. We've got to get this shot. We've got to get that shot. Yep. It was the complete opposite. And because there was no one else, it was just three of us. There was, and I didn't even tell my friends I was making this film. There was like no pressure. Right. Like it wasn't like, oh, you have to get some great footage or you have to make a good film. None of that pressure. Right. And it was like the nicest feeling. Uh -huh. So yeah. what was the editing like for you? So were you editing in your head as you were shooting or because um, I'm an editor myself, so yeah. I kind of do that. I'm thinking, oh, this is the bit. This is the bit. Uh, how is, how I had the idea you? quite early on about the structure of the film. Yeah. Because like none of my films have often got big stories like the pulp film was just like a day in the life of pulp in Sheffield and yeah 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 and that this day counts down the days to Izzy's birthday that's what was happening and it just felt like a really simple device yeah um, a friend of mine Anastasia Donians she's a she's a fantastic editor and we started working together on my tv commercials and I was hoping she was going to edit the film right but I didn't want her to edit on an Avid, I wanted her to edit on Final Cut Pro, so when she moves to Toronto, I could take over if I need to. Right. And um, she didn't have time or didn't want to learn Final Cut, so then in the end, I, I said, okay, I'm going to edit it myself. Yeah. And so I've, um, I bought a small laptop, and with the technology these days, it's amazing. Oh, all, yeah. all the rushes put on three little SSD drives. Yeah. And... Um, and then I just, just cut, cut the whole film myself on the laptop yep. and had a, a friend in Berlin, Gregory King. He's an amazing New Zealand filmmaker and he's a dramaturg. And he was, um, he was the, like a story consultant. Yep. So I would show him edits. And he's, I call him my Napui brother in Berlin. And um, yeah, and he would give amazing feedback. And then Anastasia in Auckland, I would show her edits too, and right. she would give me great ideas too. 
So what, what, what kind of decisions did you have to make when you're sorting through the footage? Hardest thing was um, cutting scenes out. Right. Like we, yeah, there's some gold we got, yeah. and it's not in the film, oh, and it's very sad, and it's even harder for for James, because in the beginning James couldn't understand why if we've got a scene that is so incredible, why is it not in the film? Right. And totally fair enough. Yep, yep, yep. But then my job is, you know, <laughs> to look at the film as a whole. Yeah, yeah. And and I, I busted my gut trying to get some scenes in there, you know, like just. Try it as a dream sequence, try it as an intro, you know, <laughs> yeah. like the Kawakawa Christmas Parade, right. for example. Right. It was a beautiful scene, one of the best Christmas parades I've ever seen, and it just captured the spirit of that town. It just immediately, you know, I was like, wow, this town, it's so rich, and there's so many colorful personalities, and there's nothing like this anywhere in the world. And I tried so hard, but I couldn't get it in the film. Right, right. You know? Yep. So. That, that was probably the toughest, yeah. but it was, um, I, I loved editing it myself. Yeah, okay, so yeah. now you're an editor. Well. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, it was. Because, I mean, I think when you're shooting and you know you're editing, you think differently about how you shoot as well. Yeah, yeah, that's and you're right. like in and out, in and out, boom, boom. This is the yeah. this is the scene. Uh, yeah, which could be good, could be bad, depending on how yeah. you are. But still, it's a it's, yeah. So, how are you feeling about filmmaking now? Oh. <laughs> my feeling about filmmaking um leading up to the premiere it's been so much work yeah so right now i feel like having a little break in the <laughs> right. countryside yeah, and not filmmaking <laughs> yeah, so yeah 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 i know oh, i know it, probably in three weeks time i'll be itching to make the next film oh good but right right now i'm not thinking about yeah 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 but yeah. I, I i am really grateful that with this film everything's flowed yeah. And um, yeah. Well, you, once you had the, the Civic on her 102nd birthday, you knew that you were, you were onto something and the, yeah. the, the gods were with you, right? <laughs> there, there's other stories when we're shooting of the gods helping us. Like when Izzy and James cross the street in Kawakawa, the zebra crossing by yep. the Hundevasa toilets. Yeah. I was like, oh, James, we really need some big trucks to pass because big trucks are like, classic yep. Kawakawa and it was like oh do we like wait you know an hour we'll just roll for an hour and James is like don't worry I'll sort it out and you know and James he put the the energy out there and as soon as we start rolling like <laughs> literally two massive trucks pass fantastic or at Cape Rianga um the, those scenes of oh, yeah. James in the very very far distance I was probably 50 or 100 meters back shooting yep. on a very long lens yep and because we didn't have a budget, we didn't have walkie-talkies. There's right. no phone range there. And, um, and were you alone then? That was the only time we we had assistance. Okay. Yeah, I had a driver, okay. a well, friend yeah, helping yeah. me, with, and James had an assistant too. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> um, but anyway, James walked down down the cliff, and he did this beautiful karakia, and I realized I'm not recording. Oh no. <laughs> which, which is something I do very often, Marty. Uh, me too. <laughs> you too, yeah. Hopefully we're recording now. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so what happened? <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, I'm just doing telepathy. I'm like, James, do it again. Please do it again. Please do it again. And Nick Minute, James just stops what he's doing. He walks all the way back up to the top. Right. Pauses and then goes down and does his thing again. Like, like, and the film was full of moments like that. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So we knew we had, you know, yeah. we didn't have a crew making yeah. it, but we had, um, and that was why James wanted, James insisted that we have um, these, these special places in the film, like Spirits Bay, yeah. but to bring the spirit world on board. Really so they're cool. going to help us with this film. Cool. Or like Tani Mahuta. Yep. That was to um you know to acknowledge and to say thanks for the help and nice yeah so the film is going to be in real cinemas soon yes, yes. beginning of may right yeah six of may it begins yeah yeah and i think yeah it's playing all around the country it's and pretty exciting yeah i mean uh so after the the screening at the civic what kind of 
feedback did you get from people? What was, yeah. I mean, I, I can imagine because I was That's, there myself. I, got a, I mean, I got a lot of amazing messages. <laughs> yeah. And that is, sounds terrible, but that is one of my favorite parts. When for the first time you get feedback from people that know nothing about the yep. project. Yeah. And um, I think the most, the most beautiful messages I got from people were um, people saying, I love you. <laughs> I was like, like yep. I mean, we, I mean, we all, I guess we all do stuff for love, you know? Of course, yes. Um, and yeah, and when you hear something like that, no. that's, it doesn't get better. No. So it was, yeah. Well, that's quite a story. <laughs> Thank you for coming here and telling me it. And I, thanks for making the movie, because I mean, I had no idea what to expect when I went and saw it. And I was just like, oh my. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, hopefully, I'm sure everyone who sees it will feel the same way, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Be great to have it out in the cinemas. Amazing to be here. I, I only oh. know your, the space from YouTube, right. and the, the Aldous Harding interviews you've done here are the, the best. They're so. Oh, <laughs> I yeah. wonder how Aldous feels about it. But so it's cool we'll to find be here. Out. But yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for coming up. Thank you. And uh, good luck with whatever happens next. I can't wait to see. You too.